show the nice people what you did to the brush here. It covers extra area. <laughs> it really gets in there. Makes a smooth coat yeah. over the spots that you can't read. It's a Goat prime example paint. of blaming the tool, <laughs> not, not the craftsman. Do you have any questions? Do your clown stay funny? Hello, my name is Crystal and welcome to our channel. I am painting our newly constructed goat house that we made from mostly repurposed palettes and scrap material that we had here. We did have to go to Home Depot and spend a little bit of money and if you're curious about those videos you can go ahead and check out the playlist down in the description of how we built it. But today I am going to be painting it. So here is what the goat house looks like now before we paint it. It is kind of rough looking, so I'm hoping that the paint will make it look nicer and not so scary. It is definitely in the view from our windows from our living room. So I may come back later and stain some of the accents the same as I did on the chicken coop. It's chilly, it's about 50 degrees today. It's supposed to get up to 63 in the ne over the next couple of days. Over the next three days, it's going to be dry. It's cold out, so it's going to take a little bit longer for the paint to dry, but as long as it's not going to be rainy or anything like that, hopefully it will dry just a little bit faster. The goats are right now currently in the dog pen next door to us eating the greenery that's over there, so they won't be getting in my way while I'm, I'm doing this. Let's just get into it. So here, I got my paint, my mixers. I got a little bit of blue tape for the gate hinge and a roller and a brush, and that's it. So we will get started. So the paint that I'm using is just an exterior paint and primer in one. It's made by Glidden, and it was less than 30 bucks. And here's what the color looks like. It was color matched to the color gray suit, which we purchased at Lowe's originally. I'm gonna go ahead and get started painting. to get do a little bit better job of getting in between here and he did a really nice job he really got in there and got the paint in the corners he had mentioned that the bristles were gonna get ruined a little bit and I was like well yeah because when I was doing it they were fraying just a little bit show the nice people what you did to the brush here it covers extra areas <laughs> it really gets in there Makes a smooth coat over the spots that you can't reach. You're like the Bob Ross of exterior. This is the goat prime example paint. of blaming the tool, <laughs> not, not the craftsman. It's a good thing that was an old brush anyway. All right, now uh, since you ruined that one, just go ahead and finish this backside here. I need some paint. Yeah, I know. Oh, 
house is painted. I have about an hour before I need to go in and make dinner, so I'm going to try and stain a bunch of the wood that I want to have stained. And I'm using the same stain that we used on the fence post, same stain that we used on the chicken. It definitely fades. It's not an exterior stain, but it looks a lot nicer, even faded. It looks a lot nicer than just the plain. Yeah, there is not enough in here. Darn. Ugh. All right, so I'm just gonna go around and do some staining here. It was less than $30 for the can of paint, but it really wasn't as good as the paint that we used on the chicken coop. A little on the gloppy side, a little difficult to use. That could have been combination with the cold temperatures today. I don't know. It wasn't that great. The other thing that was difficult was painting palette wood. It's very, very difficult. I had a little bit left over of stain in the quart size can, and we made it stretch. So let's take a look at how it looks. Let's Go around. We were able to paint in all the sides. Steve, with his expertise, was able to get in all the crevasses. Crevasses. And now the last thing that we have to do is this container, which we will talk about in another video um, that we have purchased, and Steve has improved on it to make it more watertight and mouse resistant. This place for us to store some hay and feed. So that is going to get pushed up back behind the goat house. And then the last thing that we're gonna be doing, which is not today, nope. we're gonna be raising up the flooring and getting a rubber stall mat to throw in there and maybe so we can put the shavings in that. I think it will help keep it a little bit drier in there and keep them warmer in the winter time. So far it's working out really good and I am so thrilled with how much it's cost us so far. So that'll do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Thanks you so much for watching. We will see you next time. Bye. Bye.